computer. Everyone, thank you for coming today. So today is the first seminar from Scaling Your Company and our series of seminars on Japan, doing business in Japan. So for today's topic, we're going to be focusing on accounting and taxes for business owners in Japan. And we're going to cover a bit of things for incorporated companies, but also sole proprietors as well. And today's guest will be Shinpei Wakana. And Shinpei is a member of Matchpoint, which is an accounting firm in Sapporo, Hokkaido, that helps both foreigners and Japanese entrepreneurs with their tax and accounting needs. Uh, Shinpei, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all very much for coming today. Let me introduce myself first. This is Shinpei Wakana. I'm a tax accountant in Sapporo and a vice president at Matchpoint Tax Accounting Farm. We support small and medium enterprises. Our company was founded three years ago, and we are looking to expand and take in more clients. And thank you for sending us so many questions, but I'm afraid it would take more than 90 minutes to answer all the questions effectively. So. I'm going to pick up 10 questions today, and we have chosen the most common questions that were submitted by multiple people, and we may do another session to answer the re remaining questions. If you feel that my explanation is not sufficient, please feel free to email me. I will give you my email address later. Thank you for understanding. So, yoroshika onegaishimasu. Awesome. And we will record today's session. And uh, yeah, there's some really, really good questions. And uh, also one thing to announce is either in May or June, I will bring on a labor specialist. So if you have any questions about employee contracts, labor law, uh, you'll get, uh, let's say you can ask your questions then. And because you registered for this session, I'll send the link to the recording for the next session as well to you. So you don't need to register twice unless you have a question. And for today, uh, we will try to answer all your questions first. And if we have time, we will take a Q&A from the audience. And if we don't have time for that, uh, Shinpei will share his email address to address the some questions from the people who attended today. Okay, uh, as for myself, uh, my name is Tyson Battino. I'm most well known for founding a company called OneCoin English, which grew to uh, 8,000 active students, 11 schools, 200 staff in six years in Tokyo and Yokohama. Also the subsidiary that I created for our parent company grew to about 40 million yen in our first year. So I've ran recruitment, operations, marketing, and training for hundreds of people and I can bring those skills to your team. And I am uh, supporting small business owners like yourself by doing maybe one, two, four, or eight coaching sessions a month. Okay. And uh, I have over 20 clients at the moment, ranging from media agencies, English language schools, software companies, uh, consulting agencies, and more helping them with their marketing recruitment and operations and to overall level them up. But let's jump into accounting and taxes today. So probably the most common question we got was what to hear, we would love to hear your take on a KK versus GK. So KK being a Kabushiki Gaisha and GK being a Godo Gaisha, but Shinpei, I'll pass it to you. Yes, sir. KK or GK? It's hard to decide which one to choose. First of all, both are treated the same under the tax law. So the taxes are exactly the same. But as you know, there are some differences between KK and GK. So I will highlight the different features of KK and GK so that you can make the choice that best fits your situation. There are three points. One, Scalability. 
if you want to enlarge your business, you should choose KK because KK can be listed, but GK cannot. Number two, initial cost. The cost of establishing KK will cost about 250,000 yen. And GK is cheaper to set up. It costs about 100,000 yen. So if you want to reduce the cost of establishment, GK is better. Number three, business style. Generally speaking, KK is more trusted in Japan. Although GK is gradually becoming better known, there are quite a few people who don't know about it because of its short history. Therefore, KK is better for B2B business and GK is fine for B2C business. Please consider these factors when deciding which one to choose. You can also change the corporate form later. Thank you very much. And Shinpei, to confirm, so with the KK Kabushiki, so stocks, it's yeah. uh, you mentioned listing. So does this mean you mean listing on a public stock exchange? Is that uh, what you meant by listing? Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, so listing, listing, is that for Jojo? Ah, yeah. I mean, Leslie, Jojo in Japanese. Ah, yes. Gotcha. So listing. And uh, one other point to everyone. Um, so Shinpei mentioned that uh, KK is generally trusted more. And I've spoken to a lot of my clients about it. But if you are dealing with foreign corporations, like, for example, like uh, foreign internationals like Google or like, let's say, GE, and you're a consultant to them, I've heard of cases where they've even brought on advisors who are sole proprietors. So they didn't need to incorporate to get a foreign large corporation to bring them on as a consultant. I also have uh, some other clients who they actually have Japanese clients as a sole proprietor and GK. But in that case, uh, they had a really good reputation. So uh, if you don't have a big reputation, don't have a big network, starting with a KK could potentially help for that. If you do have clients already or you're dealing with foreign uh, GK or even sole proprietor can work based on what I've heard. Excellent. Uh, next question. Uh, sorry, Shinpei, uh, at what stage of revenue would you recommend to have a physical location or office? Okay. First, there are few tax benefits for opening a new office. The main advantages are for improving operations and management and not taxes. For example, um, face to face, so communication is quicker, uh, a place for meeting with your clients and colleagues, and it's easier to open a corporate bank account. In my opinion, if you pay rent and still make a profit, I think you can have an office. But if you don't need an office right now, I think you should stay put because rent is expensive in Japan, especially in Tokyo. Not having an office is a cost-saving measure. Thank you very much. Yeah, and to summarize, I think this question was asked in terms of like, is there tax benefits for it? Yeah. And uh, so in general, no, this is this would yeah. be more of, a, let's say a business operations question yeah. as opposed to a tax question. Okay, next is Shinpei, can you list the top five to 10 most common expenses of a small corporation? So that I guess for entrepreneurs that can help reduce the taxable profit of a company. Yes. <clears throat> well, I made a list of five expenses for incorporations and we'll tell you about them. I recommend all the expenses on this list. Our company also makes use of them. Okay, now number one, director's compensation, so-called yakuin hoshu. The director can decide his own salary he must decide each year whether to lower his salary to protect the company's profits or raise it to reduce the company's taxes. This expense 
has the greatest impact on the company's profits. And this a yak, a, uh, and a uh, yakuin is a director. Yeah, it's a yakuin means director. This is an important decision to make because of the strict rules governing executive salaries. Number two, management safety mutual aid. Have you ever heard of KA safety kyosai? This must be applied for in advance. When you deposit money in a government institution, not the bank, it is an expense. And you can cancel and withdraw the money at any time you like. So it's in effect a saving account. Premium range from 5,000 yen to 200,000 yen per month. If you cancel within 40 months, you will be charged a penalty fee. So a long-term investment is assumed. Number three, buy a car in the name of the company. When purchasing a vehicle, it is better to purchase it in the company's name rather than in your personal name. Depreciation, car tax, gasoline, and so on will be company expenses. If you use the vehicle for private use, there is no problem as long as you pay the company for the use of the vehicle. Number four, renting a home in the name of the company. <laughs> <laughs> when renting a home, it's better to rent it in the name of the company. In this case, pay half the rent to the company. This way, half of the rent will be the company's expense. Yeah, and so, the Japanese term for that is uh, yaku in shataku, right? Yeah, shataku in Japanese. I used to receive yaku in shataku. <laughs> yes, that's it nice. was very nice yeah. to have, and it also it can lower your income taxes as yeah. well. Okay, last five, travel expenses. If you create a travel expense policy, you can pay a tax-free travel allowance that is separate from your salary. We simply set the rules for per diem and the scope of what constitutes business travel and pay according to those rules. Please note that if the per diem amount is too high, it will be treated as salary. And last, for sole proprietors, it's simpler. And for example, house rent, utilities, internet, travel, gift, entertainment, employee or freelancers expenses. If you also use them for private purposes, please prorate the percentage of use and include it in the expense. There are no strict rules for proportions, so a rough ratio is acceptable. Thank you very much. Awesome, those are some really, really awesome examples. And yeah, I do miss having shataku because uh, you can lower your personal income while yeah. also creating an expense for the company. Thank you so much. And uh, so Kieran, uh, if we have time at the end, uh, we can address your question for uh, number three. And uh, question four. So for a sole proprietor running a small business and filling a blue form, is there a good reason or a good time to switch to a GK or KK? What would be the advantages? Mm, okay. First, I would like to talk about the difference between personal income tax and corporate tax. Personal income tax is progressive, while corporate tax rate is constant. Income tax rates increase as income increase. Tax rates range from 5% to 45%. The corporate tax rate is 23.2% with a reduced rate of 15% for income up to 8 million yen per year. Thus, the larger the profit, the more favorable the corporate tax rate. For example, once your profits exceed 7 million yen, your, your tax rate will be about the same. So consider setting up a corporation at that time. Plus, you don't have to pay sales. Uh, you don't have to pay sales tax for the first two years. And a company is more creditworthy than a sole proprietor. Finally, 
Please note that the cost of the tax accounted varies quite a bit. It depends on the size of the business, but in many cases, a sole proprietor can request a tax accountant for 10,000 yen to 20,000 yen per month. Sometimes it's possible to request a cheaper price. On the other hand, for a corporation, even if the size of the business is small, the minimum monthly fee is about 30,000 yen. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you very much. And uh, actually we're pretty good for time at the moment. So uh, uh, Shinpei, there's one question for uh, for the sole proprietor. So for the Koji and Jigyo Nushi, there's one question. Uh, let me double check okay. uh, from Paula said, what is the acceptable ratio for rent for sole proprietors? And uh, for my case, I am, uh, in my case, I am working from home as a sole yeah. proprietor. And in my case, it's 20% yeah. because my office is about 20% of the whole apartment. Ah, oh, that's okay. But, uh, that... but to answer, so Shinpei is the answer depends on how much space you're using for the business. Is yeah. that the correct answer? Yeah, it, it depends on space, business space. Uh, what to say? Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what to say? So I think the yeah, the space you use for the company. And Kieran, if yeah. you could ask your questions in the chat, uh, yeah. I think we could address it now. I think we're good ah, for time. Okay. So if you could add it to the chat, please. And uh, as he adds that, I'll jump to question number five. Most of my team are housewives under their working husband's insurance. I think they're allowed a maximum of 80,000 yen a month to remain under their husband's insurance. Are there any things I need to be careful about? 80,000 yen a month doesn't have any problems. You don't need to take care of anything. But there are two things I would like you to know about the dependents, and I will tell you about them. Number one, 1 1.03 million yen barrier. If your annual income is less than 1.03 million yen, you're not subject to income tax and can be covered by your spouse. Generally, most housewives work not to exceed 1.03 million yen. If you have a child who is 16 years old or older, you can include him or her as a dependent if his, his or her annual income is less than 1.03 million yen. Number two, 1.3 million barrier. This is more important. If your annual income exceeds 1.3 million yen, you must pay social insurance. Social insurance costs about 15% of salary which is very high. This amount, so this amount should never be exceeded. Thank you very much. Okay, yes. Sorry for uh, the delay. Uh, so I guess regarding questions one and five, it's uh, Shinpei. The question I received was, I have one person work has a GK and they work from home. GK, work from home, yeah. Can they deduct rent as an expense? GK? Yeah, as a GK. So this person is uh, not a sole proprietor, but they have a GK, but they work from home. Oh. Can they reduce similar to, similar to a uh, sole proprietor? Oh, uh, okay. Um May I answer later? Uh, yes. No I'm sorry, I, I need to prepare the answer. Yeah, I think, oh, um, right. I think these ones need a bit of context. And uh, Kieran, the other question about uh, when you say percentage of space used for the business, uh, I think that would have to be a specific question to Shinpei and he would have to, uh, you would have to kind of explain the context for him to give you an answer for that. Okay. And uh, Kieran will put an email address uh, Shinbi's email address, so you can ask him that after. Yeah.
and uh, Shinpei, uh, sorry, Harume, I wasn't able to uh, getting a quite a ton of questions at the moment, and I wasn't able to hear. Uh, can I? Can Shinpei's I just? Answer? Can uh, I yes. just go ahead and ask the question directly to Shinpei-san? Okay, um, Shinpei-san. Um, hello, thank you for your answer. Oh, um, you. I, I wanted a clarification to, to your first point. You said if the child is 16 years or older, not yeah. younger, right? Yeah, older. Until what age is that person considered a child? <laughs> it's, a, it's about 23 or 4 um, until graduate from university. Okay, right. so 16 years or older, then you can include them in that 1.3 million. Yeah. Okay. Great. As far as um, he, his or her annual income is less than 1.03 million yen, it's fine. That's including the mother, right? Yeah, okay. your father and right. mother included. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I'm going to move forward. Excellent. So we're going to give Shinpei a bit of a break. So Shinpei, yeah. oskare sama desu. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, as I give Shinpei a break, uh, I'll explain a little bit about my service. But uh, my company is, my new company is called Scaling Your Company. And how I help is uh, because I have operational experience in a company with hundreds of people and let's say like many different departments. Uh, so for the entrepreneurs out there, if you have a vision, but you want to know the how to get it or the how to do it, that's something I can help you with in terms of strategy, but also uh, coordinating a lot of people. Uh, I can also help with marketing and sales optimization. And also I can create a lot of custom frameworks and help you with uh, some cases automation but also uh, reducing the amount of work needed to be done in the company through uh, better communication and framework creations and processes. Also, I do help some clients with uh, leveling up their managers. So usually when you reach around, I would say 500,000 US annual revenue up to a million revenue, if you really want to go to like 3 million, 5 million, you really need solid managers. And so I help clients coach their managerial team to become senior level because a lot of people when they create companies they're actually not a senior level let's say worker they don't have a senior level skill and so it's sometimes hard for them to coach employees to become manager and senior level and i help to bridge that gap and also for other clients uh, who need more of the coaching end like uh let's say focusing on the right things to do so some clients they present what they want to do I question them on it and just say like, you know, is this really going to move the needle? And some of my successes is for SEO MEO. I can pretty confident I can get your company in the top three for Google Maps and top five for Google search. I've already gotten around 15 clients in the top three for Google, even for things like Tokyo for us. Uh, keywords in Tokyo and myself, I've gotten top five for credit card Japan. I'm probably ranked number two for part-time jobs in Tokyo. I'm ranked number one for Japanese lessons in Tokyo. So I can definitely help with the SEO, MEO, and other parts of marketing. Uh, also for my clients, uh, we do, we have a mastermind group where we put you with people, maybe B2C or B2B, and you bring your biggest challenge and the group can also give feedback as well. So I provide coaching advisory sessions. And also we have a mastermind group included there as well. And uh, I offer between one to eight sessions. So I can see the watermark for Canva. I actually paid for this image, but not sure why it's watermarked. But uh, so I do one to eight sessions uh, for two sessions a month. It's uh, 27,500 yen with tax included. Uh, if you double that price for four sessions a month, I can coach uh, one of your managers or your number two. And flying is I can join your meetings and really make your company super effective. Uh, I also can do one session a month, and that's uh, 13,700, 500 yen for now. Uh, I do plan to increase it to maybe 16,500 yen for new clients. 
uh, in the coming months. Okay, that's a bit about me and Shinpei. Yes. Hope you had time to rest, but uh, yeah, okay. next is uh, <laughs> besides using one car as a means of transport for sales, what are other methods, reasons for writing off a car as an expense? So I think this is for more like uh, maybe digital marketing agencies or. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, cars are easy to expense. Whether it is an expense or not depends on whether it contributes to revenue. So even if you introduce your car on YouTube or use it for PR, you can use it as an expense. Any expenditure related to a car is a company expense. Vehicle insurance, repairs, vehicle inspections, and so on are all expenses. As I said in question three, if you use it in your private life, please pay the company for its use. For this reason, if you own the company, I recommend that all vehicles be purchased, purchased in the name of the company. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Shinpei. And uh, for the questions much. that we didn't address in the comments, I'm going to make sure uh, they don't get lost. And uh, I'll copy and paste it somewhere else as <laughs> Shinpei answers the next question. But uh, Shinpei, at question seven, question seven, at what point in the business development process should one consider using an accountant? OK. First, if you run a company, you should leave the corporate taxation to an accountant because it's so complicated. Second, if you are a sole proprietor, you may want to hire an accountant once your sales exceed 10 million yen. If your sales do not exceed 10 million yen, you can file your own tax returns or throw in a spot to an accountant who will do it for you at a reasonable price. And I got one more question. In the US, QuickBooks is the go to software for small businesses. Is that uh, yes. useful in Japan, or is there a different standard bookkeeping software you would recommend? OK, and I answered it. QuickBooks is available in Japan. I recently learned that a Japanese version is also available. But you would have to check if there is an English version. Unfortunately, there are not many accounting software packages in Japan that have English language support. We use a convenient accounting software called Money Forward, but it is only available in Japanese. It has many integrations with Japanese banks and also Stripe. QuickBooks is a very good accounting software, and I think it is best to use as it uh, it is best to use it as is. Thank you very much. And the three <laughs> big softwares, I think, in Japan is yeah. uh, Yayoi, Kaike. Yayoi, yeah. Yayoi. I think, and free with, I think, two E or three E's or four E's. But uh, even, three, three, three E's. Uh, three E's, <laughs> gotcha. But it's, it's actually not free. Yeah. So it does cost money, even though the name is free. <laughs> I think money for it. Yeah, I think in our case, we use money for it as as well at uh, one coin english okay excellent um, next question so this is a yeah this was a tough question but um so exchange rates are changing every day what is the best or i guess the correct way to report the japanese yen equivalent of earnings received in a foreign currency. And also it's uh, when three exchange rates are at play, using a yearly average can be a great disadvantage if most earnings were billed or received in the portion of the year with the highest exchange rate. Is there a strict rule or are there options for me? Okay, in principle, sales are converted into Japanese yen at the exchange rate on the transaction rate. Then they are reconverted again at the exchange rate on the settlement rate. The difference between the two 
is the foreign exchange gain or loss. However, since it is difficult to convert each transaction, it is permissible to convert a lump sum on a monthly basis at the exchange rate at the end of each month. This is subject to continuous application. Then, if there is an account receivable at the end of the period, it is converted again at the exchange rate at the end of the period. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was a, that was a tough question, but that was a good question. That was the first time for me to hear that one as well. And uh, next is, what are some business tax laws that are shifting in Japan over the next few years? So could you let us know? And do you have any advice for those changes? Okay. There are two major revisions coming in the next few years. Number one, invoice. This is for sole proprietors who do B2B business. If sales two years ago were 10 million yen or less, they are exempt from the sales tax. Currently, even if you are tax exempt, your clients can deduct, deduct the amount equivalent to the sales tax paid. However, starting October 2023, if you do not register with the government as a taxable person, the clients will not be able to deduct sales tax, which may hinder your ability to receive work orders. This doesn't start suddenly, and there are transitional measures for about three years, so there is no need to jump to conclusion. In conclusion, it depends on what the clients say. So if a large business partner asks you to become a taxable person, I think you should register. And number two, paperless receipt and invoices. The 2021 revision relaxes data retention requirements for books and documents related to national taxes in Japan making it even easier to go paperless. It was going to start in 2022, but it was extended for two years. So it will start in 2024. It would take more about three hours to explain everything. So let me introduce the materials and the system. A company called SAP is handing out free explanatory material. So please download them. Just look up quick guide to paperless SAP. And I recommend the Conquer Expense and Conquer Invoice systems released by this company as they are very useful. The system alone are fully compatible with this revision. Thank you very much. Excellent questions. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, so for the last question for today yes. is, uh, what do I have to know about import tax or VAT in Japan? That, okay. When importing goods from overseas to Japan, custom duties and sales tax are imposed on the imported goods. One, custom duties. Customs duty rates range from 0% to 40%, depending on the item. One third of the total is tax free. For example, computers and musical instruments are tax free, but food is taxed at a higher rate. Cheese is especially expensive. <laughs> <laughs> In the case of commercial imports, customs duty is imposed on the total amount of the merchandise price plus overseas sales tax, plus shipping costs requ re required for importation. Number two, sales tax. The sales tax rate is 10%. The person who takes delivery of imported goods is liable for sales tax. The tax base for foreign shipment is the sum of the CIF price, price including freight and insurance, plus 
an amount equivalent to customs duties. If the total taxable amount is 10,000 yen or less, it is exempt from duty and no sales tax is imposed. You can search for tax rate for each item by looking up Japan tariff, or you can email me later and I'll answer your question. Thank you very much. Awesome. So um, thank you very much for today, Shinpei. I, I thought this was going to be like a 90 minute session. But, uh, <laughs> actually, I think we, we prepared like, I think like five to maybe eight hours for the session. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe we were, we prepared so well that. Uh, but uh, so I wanted to introduce uh, Shinpei. So in Shinpei's case, uh, so they are an accounting firm based in Sapporo, Hokkaido, that helps both Japanese and foreign uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, things they can help you with is accounting, bookkeeping, tax returns, tax planning, and tax agent. Uh, Shinpei, could you add your email address to the chat? Oh, okay. I'll chat it. So Shinpei has added his email address. It's s yeah. or an, s hyphen wakana it, at matchpoints.or.jp. Ah uh, yes, and yeah. Please feel free to email me anytime. I'll answer all of your questions. And I think so. I think Ben. I think Paula. Kieran. I think uh, Dimitri. If I'm missing anyone else, uh, feel free to uh, send your question yeah. to Shinpei at his email address. And I apologize, Aaron, I mentioned I was going to copy and paste your questions, but uh, because I'm hosting and I'm sharing my screen, it's a bit difficult. So if you could send your questions to uh, Shinpei, that would be awesome. And uh, so I guess the reason you should choose uh, Shinpei at MatchPoint is uh, they can help you minimize your taxes, which you can then use to fund the, you can use to grow your business. Uh, also, they can explain everything in accordance to Japanese tax law and give you the information you need so you can be confident to expand your business in Japan. And also, uh, you've met, you've seen Shinpei. He's a very personal, friendly guy, easy to talk to, and uh, they can give you tips for your individual needs and circumstances. And uh, so normally their hourly rate is uh, 12,000 yen uh, without tax. I think that's uh, 13,200 yen with tax. And uh, if you are an incorporation, th the minimum fee is 30, so I guess 33,000 yen, including tax to help you as a corporation. And that is the monthly retainer fee. And also uh, Shinfei has been very kind to offer a special discount. Especially, this is very uncommon in Japan. I've never seen an accounting for an offer a discount, but Shinpei has graciously offered one month for free. So if you sign up with matchpoint.wim as a client and you mentioned that you heard about him from scaling your company, you can receive the first month free, which is a minimum of 33,000 yen. So uh, thanks, Shinpei, for that special offer. Ah. That's really, really good. And uh, last thing is uh, I also run a podcast called the Scaling Japan Podcast. So if you're interested in marketing, HR, management, uh, how to get angel investment, how to get government money, how to get investment as a non-tech company, how to get money as a tech company, we dive into a lot of topics on the Scaling Japan podcast. And before I end, so today we're ending much earlier than expected, but everyone, I'll give you a couple minutes to uh, check Wakana-san's uh, email address. A little bit more time. And uh, I guess, Shinpei, do you have any any messages for the audience? Oh, um, I just thank you so much for listening. I'm happy to have been a small help. And 
I'm thinking about posting some videos on YouTube to explain the Japanese tax system in English. So please search for Match Point Channel in Katakana, Match Point Channel. Yeah, and thank you again for everyone. Mata yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Arigatou gozaimashita. And uh, so the reason that uh, I'm asking you to ask Shinpei directly is, uh, so I did look at some of the questions and the questions have a lot of context to it. And so uh, I would rather that be a slow conversation. I don't want to put, uh, let's say, because getting the right answer is very important. I would prefer you message uh, Shinpei so you have time to process your questions also uh, ask the questions needed and not worry about uh, everyone else here. Okay, Paula, I'll let you ask the last question and uh, you can unmute. Okay, thanks. Um, so I use free because um, yeah. I speak Japanese and I also have some accounting background when I was an analyst. Um, so I do my own tax returns, but what I actually would like is just you know an accountant um, before I submit my tax return, just to sort of check it and make sure I've got everything. And also I'm interested in maybe talking to you about consumption tax, how to avoid, well, reduce consumption tax. But if I was to send you my free either account so you can log in and have a look at it, yeah. is that a service that you you would be willing to, 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 to offer? Yeah, oh, that's... yes we can. Yeah. Okay, so I can just email you on that, yeah? Ah, thank you very much. Okay, because I speak Japanese anyway. Oh, oh, so so because so. yeah, hey. the problem I have is the accountant I used before, they don't have free. Oh. So they, they couldn't help me. So they would just look at my final Aoiro Shinkoku yeah. and, uh, and sort of say, yes, it looks good or not, but they can't go into the data. So that's good. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. That was actually a, that was a very excellent question because I actually... Uh, a lot of, I've, based on what I've seen on YouTube, a lot of accountants prefer money forward to free. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, so that's, uh, and so I guess the learning point for everyone here, it's uh, usually most accounting companies, they usually prefer one software over another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Good, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. So I'll end the chat at that for today. I will send the recording to everyone next week. Uh, I'll also send uh, Wakana-san's or Shinpei's uh, email address as well. But thank you all for attending and submitting your questions. And I will try to make the next session much more easier to register for. So my apologies for uh, how inconvenient it was. And uh, I know it, I could improve on that. So I will improve it for the next time. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful day.